But first, we have a very special guest with us this hour, fresh from a starring role in England's run to the World Cup final. Delighted to say Lioness's midfielder, Georgia Stanway, is uh, here. Georgia, welcome along. How are you? Are you fresh? Are you, you feeling revived? How are the emotions after everything? Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I don't really know how to think or feel. It's like a real like weird time, of course. It's a time to be really proud to be English and proud to represent the Lionesses. And obviously, to get to a World Cup final is unbelievable, but at the same time, to get so close, it's, yeah, it's gutting. Yeah, what is the, the overriding kind of verdict for yourself? Because people will be very happy about you getting to the final, the first for any England team since 1966. Or do you still rue the way it went against Spain? Yeah, definitely. But we were beat by a better team. Mm. So I think that kind of, yeah, it kind of makes it not OK, but it's a little bit, yeah, better. Um, because we knew that at, at the game itself, was, they were the better team. And we tried to ride it out as much as we could. The second half, we were... Yeah, we were putting them under a lot of pressure, but unfortunately we didn't score. So, yeah, it was a really proud feeling to come second. But, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm still young because another <laughs> World Cup could be on the cards. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Just 24. You got an avalanche of support from over here. Did you get a sense of it? I know obviously the Euros last summer, you're right in the mix of it. But from Australia, the other side of the, the world, were you able to feel the excitement here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think sometimes when you're in your bubble and you're just focused on the games, you kind of don't really... You don't, you don't really know what's going on or how big it actually is. Um, and then after the games, when you see the numbers, the TV figures, the fact that, yeah, look at the crowd speak for themselves, everybody's going mad. And I think, yeah, we just, as a country, we just love football. Go back to the group stage, because you came into the, the World Cup, of course, you had uh, retirements, you had significant injuries, but then Kira Walsh went down against Denmark. How much did that impact the team, but specifically yourself and, and your role in midfield? Yeah, do you know what, like, when a teammate goes down, no matter who it is, it's, yeah, it's a really difficult thing. And especially in the game when it is a knee injury and somebody goes down and they're in that much pain that they don't, really want, they don't want anyone near them. They can't even deal with the fact that the physios are around them. And it's, yeah, it's a really difficult place to be. And I think the best thing that we did was we were able to ride out the rest of that game and we were able to get the result because when something like that does happen, it's, yeah, it's really difficult to overcome. And obviously, Kira's my best mate as well. So it's oh, really wow. difficult seeing your friend go down in that much pain and yeah it's funny because she's more embarrassed about the fact that she was on the stretcher than she actually was <laughs> thinking about her knee so yeah it sums up the type of person that she is yeah good to see her back as well in the tournament how do you reflect on England's performances at the World Cup maybe in contrast to the Euros where it seemed more straightforward last summer I think we really played ourselves into the tournament um, so as the games went on we got better and better and I think that's what's really important in a tournament um, because you don't want to go in and play all your cards in the first games. So we were able to hold it off and we faced situations that we'd never faced before and we were still able to get results and I think that's massive um, and I also think the teams that didn't make it out of the group and the teams that went home early were the teams that you didn't really expect. Mm. So us as the Lionesses to be able to get them results and to be able to yeah, to get one nils here and there, it's massive and I think it's actually really impressive. And how well does that reflect on the sport of women's football and the fact that it is a global game now, performances of, of teams like Haiti and, and Nigeria? It's getting bigger and bigger. Um, it's getting so much more competitive um, and it's a World Cup, so you literally never know what's going to happen. Everybody, everybody comes out the blocks and everybody wants to show up. So I think that's the beauty of a World Cup is you genuinely don't know what to expect. What was it like with the, the Lauren James sending off against Nigeria? How did you re react as a team? How did you rally around her? I was gutted for her. Um, we've all been in that moment where the emotions get too much, the pressure gets too much. And yes, for that split second, it's a split second that you'll regret. Um, but I think for her, she's got so much potential. She's got yeah, you can see the way that she plays, that she's going to make moves and she's going to be unbelievable in the future, and she is now. So I think it's just a learning experience and it's just something that she knows that she won't do again. And we were fortunate enough that we've got so much depth in our team and so much quality that we were able to get the two performances and get the two wins um, without her in the team. And then obviously she was back for the final, um, which was great. Um, but yeah, like I said, she's got so much talent and so much opportunity and just hopefully we can get everything out of her. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great to see you on as a substitute in the final. What were your thoughts about the, the final, how it played out? You said Spain with a better team. I just wonder how difficult it was, particularly playing in midfield against a team that, that keeps the ball so well. Yeah, it's, it's so difficult. The last thing you want to do is stuck in a triangle when, the, <laughs> when Spain are playing it all around you. And I definitely got stuck in a, a few triangles in the first half. Um, 
but yeah, we struggled in the first half. We struggled to get pressure on the ball. Um, they overloaded us centrally and out wide and caused us mm. problems because we couldn't get our wing backs out to get pressure on the ball. And I think in the second half, when we changed that formation and we went back to a 4 3 3, we managed to get pressure on. We managed to get the ball up the pitch um, and we put them under some real pressure. And like I said earlier, it was just unfortunate that we couldn't get a goal. Um, but that's Spain's quality. They can defend as well as pass. I suppose it shows as well that it seems like the Spain men's, boys, women, girls play the same way. Is that something that maybe England could look at? I don't know if there is a, a way to, to unify the style of play because it seems intuitive for Spain. Yeah, potentially. I think it also helps a lot that um, the Spanish players are at Barcelona, Real Madrid, um, the teams that do play tiki-taka football and the teams that do play that kind of way. Um, I think... The benefit and the real like quality, the fact that the Linus has got is the fact that we're from many different clubs that play many different ways and we're so adaptable. Um, we're so versatile in changing formation, in changing tactics, in changing whatever we want to do. And I think, yeah, that's just a real highlight of us and that we bring so many different playing styles, so many different personalities. Absolutely. Well, we heard throughout the tournament talking about personalities and, and, and stars, about your relationship with the former Manchester United winger, Luke Chadwick, acting as a, a mentor yeah. for you. How did that come about and, and what did you talk to him about? What's he been able to help you with? Yeah, honestly, the nicest man in the world. Um, you can see that he had a real journey in football. Um, he faced some things that, as a person and as a footballer, you don't ever want to face. Um, and basically, I was just having a real dip um, in life, in football, um, in my time at Manchester City. And it was a time that Luke had joined my agency and I just reached out to him and um, he reached out to me as well. And we just kind of found a relationship where we can focus on targets, we can put aims together, we can speak weekly, we can go through games, we can go through life, we can set mm. targets in life. And that was something that I really needed. Um, and yeah, I've been with him for three, four years now, um, speak to him once, twice a week. Um, and honestly, it's the best thing for me because it just removes everything um, from football and I can go home and I can put football to the side. I can just talk to him about what's necessary and yeah, whether it's life or football, he's there for me no matter what.